In this lesson, we will learn how to create buttons which users can tap or click to reveal or hide certain sections of content. So let's jump straight to a visual example of this. Let's look at the finished product. So here is an example page, and if I resize the browser to a width that resembles a smartphone, we can see that the navigation is gone, and there's a menu link that we can click. And when we tap or click that, the menu is then revealed. This is a great way to conserve precious screen real estate on smaller devices. Mobile navigation menus are probably the most prominent example of this functionality. You've probably seen many websites that use this strategy. Let's take a look at another example. So on a laptop or a large tablet or a traditional computer, if we scroll down a bit, we see there's a bit of text. So this section reads important text and this area reads full text. So maybe this text isn't super important. Now if we resize our browser down to a smartphone size, you can see that the full text is gone. So perhaps we decided that it wasn't important enough to show initially on a smartphone, but you can see that we have this link here that reads read full text. Now this link was not present at the desktop or laptop size. So you'll see there is no link. But again, at the smartphone size, if we click this link, it reveals the full text, and then you can see that it's phrasing changes to hide full text. So if we click it again, the extra text is hidden. So that was a quick demo of the reveal and hide functionality, but looking at a finished product isn't very educational. So now let's hop over to a tab that doesn't have any of this functionality, and let's work together to create this behavior. So our recipe for creating the reveal and hide functionality has two ingredients. The first ingredient is a bit of custom HTML and CSS, which we can write without a problem. And the second ingredient is a JavaScript solution that we're going to plug into our page named declarative toggle. In this scenario, JavaScript will handle the click or tap events, and it will also add and remove the right classes at the right moment to the right elements. So let's get started. Let's begin by adding the declarative toggle JavaScript file to our web page. So here is the JavaScript file, declarative toggle. You can find this in the description for this lesson or in the downloadable zip for the lecture. So I'm going to move this file to live with the other website files. So here's my website folder. Here is the JavaScript folder. So I'm gonna move declarative toggle to live within the JS folder. Next, let's actually include this file in the head section of our HTML. So I'm just going to copy and paste one of the existing script lines, and all we need to change is the name of the file. So our file still lives in the JS folder, and its name is declarative toggle.js. Excellent. So with this one line of code, we have leveraged JavaScript. And now all we need to worry about is the HTML and CSS. So let's give ourselves a goal. Let's imagine that we want to hide the navigation and include a link in the header that reads menu. Now let's begin by adding this behavior to all devices and screen sizes. And then once we have everything functioning properly, we can make it responsive by feeding the behavior only to smaller devices. So let's begin by heading to our HTML and adding the menu button. So I will create a span Within the span, I will include the word menu. Now the declarative toggle script is actively searching for elements on the page that have a data attribute of data toggle target. Now this attribute is where we specify what should be revealed when we click on this element. So this attribute accepts CSS selectors. So for example, when we click on the menu element, we want to reveal this nav element, the navigation. And that element has a class of site nav. So within this data attribute, we can simply give it a value of dot to represent a class and then site nav. And finally, as far as the HTML is concerned, we also want to add a class of toggle button to any declarative toggle buttons that we create. So that's it for the HTML. Now let's hop over to our CSS. I'll create a new comment to stay organized. Reveal and hide styles. Now, our JavaScript solution of declarative toggle has a hands-off approach, 
meaning it lets CSS do a lot of the heavy lifting. The toggle declarative script utilizes four classes. They are toggle button, toggle button visible, toggle target hidden, and toggle target expanded. So very quickly, by default, we want toggle buttons to be hidden. So display none. If the JavaScript file is loaded successfully, it will add a class of toggle button visible. So then we want them to be display block. Next up, toggle target hidden. So our script will automatically add this class to elements that we want to reveal. So we want them to initially be hidden. So display none. And finally, when we click on the button, our script adds this class, toggle target expanded to the target element. So we want it to be display block or visible. So with this CSS in place, if I save and refresh, you can see the navigation is hidden. If we click on menu, it's revealed. And if we click menu again, it's hidden. Now let's take a look at how easy it is to make this behavior responsive. So let's imagine that we only want this hide and reveal functionality for small screens. All we need to do is head over to our CSS and of these four new rules that we created, the bottom three need to simply be wrapped in a media query. So I will cut these into my clipboard and let's create a media query. So media screen and max width. So I'm going to say anything smaller than a tablet. And then I'm simply going to paste in the CSS. So now if I save and refresh, we can see at the desktop level, the traditional navigation is in place. But if we shrink the browser down to a phone, here's the menu. We can toggle the navigation. We can hide the navigation again. And even if we make our browser large again, it reverts back to the standard navigation. Now we all know that practice makes perfect. So let's try this functionality again on the full text example that we saw earlier. So let's head over to our HTML. Here is the full text area. So the first thing I'm going to do is wrap this content in a div so that we have some way of grasping it. So I'll cut this to my clipboard. Let's create a div named full text and then I'll paste the content back in. Next, let's add the read more button at the end of the important text paragraph. So here, so I'll create a span and I will give it an attribute of data toggle target. And we want to target this full text div. So a class of full text. So dot full text. Now within the span, let's have it read read the full text. Let's also be sure to give this span a class of toggle button. So if we save and refresh, you can see that at the desktop level, the link is not visible and the full text is visible. But if we make our browser window smaller, the full text is not displayed, but we see this option which reads read the full text. And if I click on that, there's the full text. So now let's make a few edits. Let's style this span so that it actually looks like a link or a button. So let's jump over to our CSS and give that span a unique class. So it already has a class of toggle button. Let's give it a second class of read more. So now if we hop over to our CSS, we can create a special style for read more. So let's give it an underline text decoration underline and let's make the color blue. And we can even provide a hover style. So read more hover. Let's remove the text decoration or remove the underline. So text decoration none. So now if we refresh, it actually looks like something that we would want to click or tap. Now I want to show you one final feature of declarative toggle. So you will notice that when we click on this, it shows the full text. But if we were to click on it again, it hides the text. So perhaps it would make sense that once it's been clicked or tapped once, this text should change. So instead of saying read the full text, it should say hide the full text. So we can implement that very easily. Over in our HTML, on this span button, we can provide an additional data attribute named data toggle text. And this is where we can provide that alternative text that reads hide the full text. So if we save and refresh, 
If we tap this once, the content is displayed. We can see the text changes to hide the full text. So the description of the button changes depending on what action it's actually performing. Now before we close out this lesson, let's give ourselves one additional goal. Let's imagine that we only want the hide and reveal functionality in the navigation for small screens. But what if we want the hide and reveal functionality on this full text even on large screens? Now when we originally structured our CSS for the declarative toggle classes, we placed them in a media query, which means unless a device is smaller than this breakpoint, the device will more or less just ignore our JavaScript solution. So what if we want larger devices by default to ignore our JavaScript solution, but in certain circumstances, so perhaps if the elements live within the main column, then we do want larger devices to play along. All we need to do is copy these styles that live within the media query and paste them so that there's a copy outside of the media query and then add on an additional class to these selectors to make them a descendant selector. So for example, this main column of our website has a class of main area. So we can create descendant selectors and say only if these elements live within the main column, do we want large screens to play along with our JavaScript solution? So now if I save and refresh, we can see that we still have the traditional desktop navigation, but down here, the full text is hidden and we can show and hide it at will. That's going to bring this lesson to a close. I hope that you can find interesting uses for this functionality in your pages and your websites. Perhaps you can get creative and adjust the media query breakpoint and create all sorts of neat responsive layouts with interesting bits of content to toggle. So like always, I encourage you to experiment and have fun, and I will see you in the next lesson.